I'm Carmel Finley. I teach world history at Oregon State University in Corvallis, Oregon. And my project here at the Carson Center is to look at the roots of overfishing. I'm interested in why governments built so many boats after World War II, why we have policies that uh, continue to build boats when we have too many boats and too few fish. The international fishery treaties were signed after 1946. The, the framework for institutional management of fisheries was created during this period. And the objective of management at that time was to set fishery harvest goals. The whole foundation for fisheries management is not really based on science, it's based on policy. And if we were to set out to create a fishery management system today, it would be completely different from the system that we've um, got right now. It, uh, the policies back then were based on some mistaken assumptions about the ocean. Uh, people, uh, people thought in 1949 that fishing was good for fish stocks. It removed older, larger fish and that freed up food for smaller, younger fish to grow more quickly. And to a certain extent that's true, but uh, we carried it a little too far. And uh, we built a f global fishing fleet enormously quickly, very, very fast. The technology transfer, uh, the knowledge transfer, that was facilitated by government money. There were a lot of government money went into fisheries after World War II. And, but our knowledge of the ecosystem and the ocean and the interactions with fish, that came much more slowly. Since the adoption of the Law of the Sea process in 1958, uh, fishery management has been aimed at harvest, at estimating how many fish we can take. And generally speaking, we have underestimated how many fish we're taking. And we, we haven't really understood the cascade of changes that that um, has set off within fish populations. So we talk about trying to shift to a more holistic uh, more holistic ecosystem-based management. The question is how do we do it? And one of the things that we're going to have to do is change the law. We're going to have to change the policy. And uh, I think that that's going to be a really difficult, uh, really difficult thing to do because we have to explain to people why it's necessary. The industrial model has turned fish into an abstraction. And the way back for us, I think, is consumers and um, as citizens is to try to think about the whole fish, not just the piece of the fish, and then to learn a little more of, about the fish, where it lives, how it lives, how it's harvested. So to turn it from an abstraction back into uh, a living organism in the ocean. I think one of the problems with the industrialization of fishing, we get tuna in a can. Who knows what tuna looks like? Tuna are these really beautiful fish. Um, we go to McDonald's and we get a fish sandwich and it's a little, a little square of breaded pollock from the North uh, Pacific Ocean. Uh, you know, what does pollock look like? So I think that it's really important for consumers and citizens to become involved in this because the pressure for change isn't going to come from within the system, it's going to come from without of the system. It's going to come from citizens who want to see fish stocks managed in a sustainable manner so that there will be fish for their children to eat. And uh, right now, basically, we're um, managing a lot of species in uh, not in a sustainable manner and we need to change that.